What is the behaviourist perspective? One of the main assumptions of the behaviourist perspective is that all behaviour is learned, or conditioned, and shaped by the environment. Another assumption is that conditioning involves associative learning, association between stimuli and responses, which did not exist before the learning took place. A further assumption is that psychologists should only study directly observable and measurable behaviours. A main strength of the behaviourist perspective has been the development of useful applications. Behaviourism offers very practical ways of changing behaviour from, for example, therapies through to advertising. However, at the same time this does raise an ethical issue, as if the behaviourist perspective is able to control behaviour, who decides which behaviour should be controlled or changed? A further important contribution of the behaviourist perspective has been the emphasis on objective and scientific ways of studying behaviour. However, this does raise the issue of generalisation, as it is difficult to generalise finding from a laboratory study, and especially so when generalising from non-human animals to human. The approach studies behaviour in a very scientific way, as it usually uses laboratory experiments in very controlled conditions, so extraneous variables are avoided, and so the IV can be isolated to measure the effect on the DV, and therefore cause and effect can be inferred. There is also a huge practical application to real life, because there is support for classical and operant conditioning, which is a mechanism for learning in the classroom. It provides support for teachers when bringing in teaching methods, and also helps parents shape their child. It is a strong and highly influential perspective in psychology, as it thoroughly explains behaviour. For example, Skinner's study shows how rats can press a lever, reinforcement, and they will get food. Many therapies have also come out of it, such as behavioural therapies, which has helped to get rid of certain human behaviours. Perhaps the main problem with the behaviourist approach occurs because by not focusing on the cognitive processes, it is only giving a partial explanation of human experience. However, the influence of the behaviourist perspective can be seen in more modern perspectives, such as the cognitive behavioural approach, which still takes a behaviourist approach but recognises the role of cognition. A further problem with the behavioural perspective is that many of the practical uses of the approach, such as aversion therapy and token economy systems, when used as a way of changing behaviour, do tend to be short-lived. That is, they do change behaviour, but often only for a limited time. Also, as laboratory experiments tend to be used, the studies are very low in ecological validity, so we have to be careful when applying the findings to everyday life. This issue could cause demand characteristics or social desirability bias. There is also a huge problem with ethics, because children or animals are generally used who cannot really give their full consent. For example, in Freud's study of little hands, Hans was only a baby, and so he could not give his consent, and the experiment could have caused him psychological harm, because he was taught by associative learning, classical conditioning, to not like objects which were once his favourites. It also only focuses on observable behaviour, and is therefore reductionist. It doesn't look at other explanations for why behaviour may be there. For example, with schizophrenia, it is not often observable, because it occurs in the person's mind. Therefore, this is a weakness of the approach because it is reductionist, which could cause them to miss out on very important factors. It is also very deterministic, as it assumes behaviour will be learnt by classical or operant conditioning. It assumes that everyone will learn in this way, and that behaviour cannot take place in any other format.